Hello, hello, this is Rogue, and uh, I'm here now with week four, going over my matches from RGL Season 8 Highlander with Mankosh Monday, where on a uh, product here, we played against Hood Naruto, which is sort of the undisputed best team in the main season anyway for now. And of course, joining me, I have Blake of Hood Naruto. So what's going on, Blake? What's going on, Rogue? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, and why don't you, uh, if you'd be so kind, to give a little introduction of, uh, you know, who you are, what you do, maybe your history. Uh, so I used to play, like, Silver Highlander, uh, like, Silver and Steel Sniper for a while, and just messing around with friends, like, off-classing team where we just play all the classes every week. Uh, and people would just, like, press random and, you know, mess around and stuff. And then... Uh, I got asked to play Sixes Medic, and I haven't gotten to play another class since. So, yeah, pretty fun. Mm -hmm, yeah. W w welcome to, uh, yeah, we could be cellmates here in Medic Jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I've been blessed to also get picked up by, uh, you know, Memento Mori last season. Uh, they were looking for a medic, uh, and, you know, bless their hearts, they decided to pick me up and, uh, there's good. There's wonderful lads over at MM. Of course, uh, he's being modest. Then they won first place in grand finals. So <laughs> th this guy knows what he's talking about. But I guess with that out of the way, we'll uh, we'll get started. Oh, and we'll play the Let's rollout start. on half speed or, or like a little low, lower than half speed, just because it's cough. And of course, just yell pause anytime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I would only this part. There we go. <laughs> I would pause like right here, like right here. This is where like, right now I'm thinking like, and I would ask you the same thing is like, are you gonna buff sniper then kind of say screw your scout or is your scout gonna wait for you? And like, you can still get the buff out on the sniper here. Like, do you ever feel like it's kind of like scuffed to get that sniper buff if he goes cliff? Or do you kind of prioritize that if he's gonna swoop up like, sometimes snipers go main sometimes they go cliff like is that like one of your main priorities on this rollout or you kind of just want to get to mid with heavy and soldier buffed here yeah you can see here i even like tried to get over but the pyro happened to catch the beam instead of the sniper so hopefully i'm going to grab it but usually we play to buff sniper for sure and then have scout wait but uh, if you catch the uh, two weeks from now, you're going to see me and Watterson kept bickering where I missed him on like most of the rollouts on Lakeside. But as you see, if I miss mess it up in the second and a half window, then it, it sucks. But yeah, mostly I try and get the sniper and then have Scout wait. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I try to do that. I sometimes like I get really frustrated with like I'll watch my rollout and just look at like all my heals and like see what player I'm healing the most on rollout. Like obviously you're trying to get your demo, but like I feel like getting your sniper as long as you can to extend that buff. So if he does in that like slow peak fight, like in versus the other sniper, a little sniper duel, then he might have like the upper hand of like the body shot or something. But then I also feel like, you know, sometimes on some maps, like your soldier is super impactful where you need to give them that 300. And then there's other maps where I'm like, like on Asheville, for instance, if I don't get my heavy 450, when he does that like feed play where, you know, most heavies, especially on this map, like, Sometimes they just walk across points. They're not 450 there. It's like you just feel gimped. I don't know. It, it's it's always frustrating to have these moments where like you want to get the beam on someone and then someone else is inside their player model. I feel like rollout is like the worst time for that to happen. Yep, yep. I, uh, I try and instill in the players, like, make it easy for me to reach you. Don't, like, hide and then get upset with me. So, like, even if you jump, for example, like, if Jerry here were jumping, I could reach him no problem. But because I have to try and tap near him in the pyro, it's, yeah, you, yeah. you see it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, if you can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you still get him. And, of course, this is a ringer scout and sniper, but... True. So you, you that is another thing. It's not It's not triple, which Animus, you know, compared to triple, I, I'd say with the pot, like, just the chemistry that you and triple have, especially on, you know, the times that you guys have been playing together, uh, it's a it's a very, like, big shoes to fill in for Animus, so I don't, I don't blame him, like, you know, not knowing the rollouts and stuff like that perfectly. Yeah. And, and this might be, I think... 
So we have Animus is on Scout ringing for Triple. We have Jerry on Sniper ringing for Watterson. And this might be our first match with BM on Pyro as well instead of RJ? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so three three new faces, but I'm uh, I'm curious to see what you have to say about this rollout too. I like this. Side. I really like that where you go pocket and you're coming up so really slow. This is fine. Like I, I'm okay with this. I go main most of the time, but it depends on where my demo is. It just depends on like what you guys are doing. Like on this map, it, like Bull will do either one. He'll either go pocket or he'll go main, the same as Exile here. But uh, I like this where you just go pocket and kind of get that late buff on your soldier so you can guarantee him crit heals. And I feel like it's way safer than going main. Like main always just feels like a cluster where like if you get unlucky and take a spam pipe or something like that like it's already like oh my gosh i'm you know i'm already playing panicked at the mid and that's not really what you want to do you know like our best ability at mid is you know healing our demo and making sure that we can keep the fight in rather than backing out and i feel like once you get piped in that main you're just you're screwed for the rest of the mid kind of yeah i, I agree I like but that's funny that you say that you usually go main because my team, um, hang on, let me get that heavy volume off. The, when my team um, was practicing, right, we kept arguing back and forth over these mids, like, you know, because it's a ringer scout, so he's not getting the right kind of heals. I mean, me and Exile are still working it out. I mean, this is only our fourth week or so in this season versus me and RJ playing years together, right? So mm -hmm. the, we were going all back and forth. What do we do with our heavy? You know, our sniper's not getting about. So I went and did some research, right, where I took, I think, 12 blake mids and 12 casper mids i watched on a sunday and really tried to iron out see what everyone else is doing on these mids and boy i tell you it was so funny because going over yours i'm like okay so blake goes pocket he heals this person some he reacts sometimes this way here's like the three options out of it i had like you know maybe 12 or so bullets of uh of ideas and notes that i took and then uh, implementing as you can see here so thanks by the way but then <laughs> The best part is that I went over the Casper mids and for the, the folks back home, Casper on MTS is a very dear friend of mine and we've been mentoring for the past like almost a year now together. And so I watched all your things and had all these points, all these things I'm working on. And then I watched the Casper mids and I'm like, oh, this is this is what I do. I had like literally no, my notes are like the same mid that I do. And then he dies because I also die on my mids. So that's why now I'm in pocket instead of main. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I used to go main, like, all all the time, like, every single time. And then what I started noticing is, like, I mean, I'll, I'll give it away, because, like, you guys call it, uh, you guys are, uh, Lenny goes porch almost every time, like, like, same as, like, Fallen, like, both of those snipers love going porch. So I noticed, like, wait a minute, I could go, like, pocket, like, the long way behind house and go pocket, my demo usually isn't dead. Like I can get the arrow. I'm, I, I'm like, I'm trusting myself to hit that arrow. And if I don't like, you know, Hey, that's, uh, that happens. But the pocket is like, yeah, I can buff my sniper. Maybe I can get my heavy up there too. Cause I'm like super safe. I don't have to cross a sight line from main. And sometimes a lot of snipers do go pocket or come up Valley. So you have to cross like the sight line if you do want to buff your heavy or you just have to be like, getting really good pressure out from your demo on like the right side or the left side of the point, depending on if you're blue or red. Like if your demo is like super aggressive, you're for, like going main is really fine. But like, I feel like most demos are really playing like, uh, they understand that like the sniper can easily roll out and kill you a lot of the times. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm curious, was it like, were you, every time you went main, was it just like, okay, I'm just getting spammed. Like, this is no fun. or And I'm just going to kill, keep doing it because I'm putting out way more healing than if I'm in pocket. Was that the feeling or? Yes, it was a, yeah, a selfish decision rather than the sniper heals. But on top of that, I noticed like, uh, I like really weighed it up because I've tried this mid before, like K&D had me trying it too. But the thing that really turned the tide for me in this season was like, wait. So I'm giving slightly worse heals to my demo and scout. But the thing is, if their like hang lives are hanging on by a thread where I would have to be in main in order to keep them alive, I would be taking the same damage as them. So my life is also on by a thread. Yeah. So there's nothing to do. And what really sealed the deal after that too was the the soldier getting behind, like it come China or main. So when I play here towards pocket, like I have my heavy and cliff, we'll definitely deny the bomb. The soldier can only come from one place if he's in our house. And uh, that that was a big one as well. 
I'm, I'm curious when you're in pocket here are you like w what's like the main thing you're really like focused on are you focused on like your demos just pure health and like just back of your mind is your positioning and then like the spam that's coming in or are you more just like i'm i'm gonna heal whoever's like actually actively fighting and then i'm eyes on like the flank because i feel like a lot of medics like get like scrutinized or not like noticed enough for like our view on like how much we pay attention to our flank fighting uh, especially on cough where like i feel like a lot of medics you know have a chance to shine on like how well they focus on the flank and are able to maintain like heels on their demo is that something like you like to think about or is yeah, that i just <laughs> pop something we're, we're even gonna see like a uh, um I have like basically like a countdown where it's like, I guess we see the spine now on the screen, but you know, at these mids, it's like, I look forward and up and stuff. Like I see the soldier now coming through the sky. I see the spy mm -hmm. decloaking on the flank, but if I didn't see like, you know, if I didn't see the spy, for example, we're going to see maybe in like five seconds in real time, I would then turn around and watch for spy almost full time or the soldier gets behind. I'm like, all right, I'm calling the soldier, you know, our pyro is reflecting the spam our heavy mm -hmm. notes to watch for, you know, when they peak for the call. So yeah, because the players that I'm healing aren't really going anywhere. Like, unless we call them, we're all moving forward, they're going to be here, so I can look wherever mm -hmm. I want. Yeah, I like that. It's the freedom. Oh, whoops. I need some volume. I also play, like, the sixes mentality, where, like, I heal my demo enough to not die, and then uh, I give the rest of the heals to my scout. Uh, I like that. That wasn't working for me on Lakeside when we were playing. We did eventually win, but you know, it's just it's another a whole another story. But yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Like your demo should not, you know, be perma two sixty unless it's like super important times. So it's like he's calling for it. I agree. This is just I hate this feeling on medic. Oh my lord. Like where you took spam and you're like, okay, I need to be in and healing. I need to prioritize arrows on the players. Like you prioritize your scout, which is perfect there. Like, you know, my demo, your demo's hurt, but like he can't really like move around that much. And that was perfect there. Like you had no hesitation at all. Jerry should probably be backing up. That's you know, not really, you don't need to be healing him. You, you're perfectly healing your demo here. Like now that like you're backing out and your demo's going to the left, I'm not really sure. Maybe there's like the picks were called and you guys were called to back out, so I'm assuming. Yeah. You guys lost your NG and Pyro and there's just too much pressure on point. And that call usually comes from me where like you saw we were in like an 8v8, but then it was 7v8, 6v8, now 5v8, we finally start backing, so the yeah, call and, probably should have even come sooner. Yeah, and, and you saw your health of the players there. So like I, I feel like there's two ways to, to kind of play that situation is like you know, everyone sack and get out and then, you know, they're going to cap and then we're going to be on faster respawns or whatever. But like, I, I, don't, I don't know. You could do that and just, you know, Mongo hold W into the enemy medic with everyone besides your medic. <laughs> but it's it's like one of those split decisions where like if you call the back out, you feel like, okay, we, we made the right play, but like, oh, could have we have called people to sack? Like, was there a chance or no? It was better to just save our spawns and refight with full Uber, I think. Uh, now, do you want to go back to full speed, or do you want to take this Uber at half speed too, or lower speed? Um, I don't remember this specific Uber. So, if you just want to go full speed, and then if you want to like say what you're thinking, like at least like I think another thing that uh, I would like to know is like what your thought process is on like the percentage of your Uber and like where you'd like to be at what percent, or is it more of just like a feel of like the picks and the Uber? Because I feel like the feel of the picks and the Uber matter. But I feel like also if like, you know, I'm stuck at 20% and I'm on in dog bread, I'm not as safe as if I was like 30%, 35 running back from dog bread. Sure, got it. I remember we had a lot of issues coordinating these Ubers with our scout, but I'm, I kind of blurred the line between what was the scrim and what was the match, so. <laughs> Yeah, you can see like our demo didn't even jump in, like we took a solo scout Uber, I'm not quite sure why, but this is good from Exile. Yeah, I like that Uber, do you have any thoughts? Uh, 
Our heavy for post should be on Cliff, but that's not for you. I feel like I like that Uber. I like the scout Uber. I feel like the enemy medic kind of trolled and just kind of panic popped. But, you know, that's that guy's is not that good. But <laughs> if I'm looking back at this correctly, like I don't feel like the scout did a lot of damage, but I do like like the dem the scout solo cuz like you can get something out of it, but I feel like exile probably should have been at least like behind you somewhat like spamming maybe not taking a flash because you're committed to ubering early and getting the scout speed fully across the point it's just unfortunate that exile and your heavy are now like kind of discombobulated for post because if they do refight main here they're just getting it spammed out like completely by either the enemy demo or you know like a collapse because they're kind of stuck together rather than having that like heavy positioning on cliff but I feel like you backed out perfectly here and your crosshair placement is good for posts. Like you're up in the sky, which is like, I mean, your heavy is already looking behind you, so you should trust him to get that. Um, and I believe Exile stayed out. He might have crit heals. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's the good part of it. But like, I feel like Exile could have been in there and done some really good damage, especially because, you know, I believe the entire enemy team was like right behind pocket. But maybe it was yeah. just like a like, hey, we need to Uber out. Let's get the Uber out and let's dry fight. Was that like more of like the call? I don't know. I mean, I agree with you. Like, if he got two stickies in, even that would have done so much damage, or like made your Uber worse because you would have to flash a bunch. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's why again I said we had some problems in scrims with how we're taking these Ubers. So at first we said like, all right, we're like leading on demo to jump and then we're walking scout and then we said like okay we're gonna have like demo take the first half scout take the second half and then we said this and like we just kind of never agreed on something but i think this is not awful in the way that to me this is like a super modern uber where yeah. the ubers don't actually do anything instead what's important is winning the post right so my team's like just get their uber out get them to flash we're gonna get in and out and we're gonna come in with heels and win the post but we're already starting at a 7v9. Not even to say that our engineer or our spy made a mistake. Like, the NG got, like, you know, your flank has nothing better to do than to run over ours in the downtime. And our spy had to get in position or maybe got caught out, maybe went for a play during the Uber, whatever it is. So, you know, not exactly. It's not up to them whether they succeeded or failed, but, you know, it's not looking great just because we're missing those picks. Yeah. And another thing is, like, the, the whole, like, exchanging ubers i i like it because it really shows like what teams can like adapt to you know getting their crit buffs or making maintaining like good collapses because i feel like the ubers that run people over is kind of just like you know that's like either just massive ad misplay by the other team or it's like one of those situations where you kind of just have to go to the point or whatever yes but i like I, I like these kind of ubers where it's just like gets it out and then we're you know kind of fine and we're trying to, you know, crit heal as many people as possible. Amen. Amen. And now that we lost that, like, we got no picks and lost that third one, so I already know this is losing, so I like that I got myself out in time. Yeah, you, you got out in time, and then I feel like the just what we talked about where like our heavy is too close took the same spam as our demo and then it's like we go for the arrow on our heavy and it's like okay our whole team just walks in front of our line <laughs> which is always nice I, I like to make a lot of like conditions like even for myself but i think it helps people when i'm entering too where like it's hard to tell sometimes whether positions are that strong or that weak so you saw we're like oh it's a post uber and they took some damage and flashed and we have some health but we're down to so what i thought to myself in that situation is okay if we get a single pick i can stay if we lose a single pick i must leave mm -hmm. so then i just got to like just forget about what i do because it's already predestined do my best to heal and do my job as a medic and then oh we lost one person and i'm out yeah Yeah, <laughs> so that, I don't know any snipers that do that besides Lenny. Yeah. That just like instantly... Yeah, that, that, that does rarely happens. <laughs> like you yeah. can't, you can't like... 
Like you there's something I, I like to say. Rock and just instantly headshot you. Like there's literally, what am I supposed to do as the medic there? Yeah, there's a difference between losing to your opponent versus your opponent beating you. Yeah. There, I just got outplayed by Lenny. There's, yeah, there's nothing better. Like it, you were backing out, like you, you were like, okay, I'm gonna get the positioning here, and then okay, I just instantly headshot. So this, I, if you could pause it here, I, I run into this like so much where like where we're dry fighting from cliff and it feels so like i, I don't know it, it just feels awkward because the if they get the call on you early like the soldier can bomb o over cliff and it's like really you know it's it's a really good bomb for them like they all practice that all the time like it's like their favorite bomb like every soldier that does product like that's such an easy bomb for them to do even i can do that a story of a thousand free games <laughs> yeah and it's like it's like it's such a it's such a dangerous place for you to be and i like how you immediately jump down here because like i even though the like up up, up there may seem like oh my gosh you have the high ground it's such an easy bomb for them to make yeah it's so scary i i hate that place <laughs> I'm just saying. i mean i really like just because i get like a very easy surf like oh, anytime true. I'm in like a like between a like straight up against a wall like on dog red or if I'm in like a corner or something, uh, you know I like those types of positions just because I have an instant surf. But I, I also like um, this kind of like playing the beam and this kind of flow chart. So I'm like, okay, my team's going cliff, so I'm gonna wait like one beam distance and then I go. Now I'm on cliff, wait for them to go. Okay, it's now beam distance to get to my demo so I can jump off. So it's just like step by step moving forward with the team, but not taking the same damage as them. Yeah, I, I like that. I also like just making sure that uh, my sniper's buffed as long as possible. Like any time on Koth, I'm rotating like a anywhere, particularly like just any like cliff, main, where wherever. Like I'm prioritizing the beam probably a little too much for my sniper, but <clears throat> I feel like having them just be buffed and like giving them the confidence of like you know. Hey man, I'm like I'm watching, like I'm I'm with you, like we are fighting together, like you're not getting baited here, like you're peeking this sideline with your medic, you know I'm I'm the one healing unit right now. I don't know if they notice that, but like you know, hopefully it gives them some sort of like, like oh yes, we can do this, like I'm buffed. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this, yeah, if if, if, if the sixes mindset is keep my demo healthy enough to not die and give the rest of my scout, then Highlanders definitely keep my demo healthy enough to not die and give the rest of my sniper. I think that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, like, I, I have flashed or, like, popped ubers on my sniper before. Not not now in, like, matches, but in scrims I'll do that. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, you're we... doing that. This also is a tough one for me, just staying here, but I can't cross. Yeah, I I feel like the only way you can play that really is getting your scout speed and crossing there, and just trusting that you can deny the, or like juke the, the spam if they're really committed to that left side. I feel like yeah, you're close to having those, so there's really no point in risking your life there. So I, I mean, it's kind of on your team to rotate back to you and maintain that healing. Because, like, right there, you're sitting there and you're having your crossbow out. You had spades to heal for, like, a second. But your demo, scout, and pyro were all on the left side of the point. And it's like, okay, how do I continue healing? I'm close to having. I don't really want to just, like, walk in this sight line real quick. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens here because this Uber already seems bad. Just because we're so bunched up and you know where we're coming from. We have no flank presence or anything. And, uh, obviously, we lose this match horribly so i mean there's no no surprises that this uh for all the folks back home i'm sorry to say this does not Spoilers. lead to a dub but I, i'm gonna play this one a little bit slower yeah see like we had like kind of heavy demo scout all peak the damage at the same time and then we backed up and picked only the scout what do you think about this, backwards ubers i love this i like this this is this is uh uh this is how you play medic right here for all the folks that are watching like if you're not doing this on your ubers like this is like this is such chad gameplay like you trust like okay i'm i know how to play medic like my beam can connect this man backwards and i know that the only way it go like will get removed 
is if I move too far away or click on somebody else. So I can just continuously do this and look at anyone who needs to get flashed. This is, this is, this is nice. If only your soldier was like ready to bomb, because I know you'd be looking up for a flash on that too. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you like it as much as I do. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, backwards Ubers are so cool to watch. Because it's like, you know that like, okay, my team is doing what they can on the other side, and I can just get out here. Like, you're seeing exactly what you can live and not live from. Oh, I think we have a demo glitch, but... I, I even, talking about the amount of time left, like, we finished two in pocket just in time. I even prevented a little bit of damage on our pyro and demo on the back out. Like, I flashed our demo with crit heals, by the way. So that, oh, yeah, one, uh, that is so much extra health that's guaranteed since he's flashed with the crit heal. Yeah. Okay. It would have been nice that our heavy didn't jump into the wrangled mini, but it's unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Just ha it happens. So that was a good uber overall, but did you see that? Uh, for the folks back home, hit, hit that rewind button. That their soldier and engineer just pushed through our concrete. Like, the super was fine, but it's such a massive difference on the flank. And it's, again, not our flank's fault. Like, our scout was in the uber, our soldier you saw was dead. So now, we just lost our engineer, but he was in the th 1v3. So there's no winning that. So this is already lost before we even take this fight whatsoever. Yeah, numbers dis add on product, especially an invite, is a lot harsher now that teams are way more willing to just throw bodies at you. Yeah. Well, your team is anyway. <laughs> My team does throw bodies more than anyone, yes. <laughs> wow, and actually it does work out. As, uh... I think I think Exile did really well here. He played, like, he didn't peek his body, and he played, like, his spam really, really well here. And I think Bull got aggressive and uh, did not. <laughs> I would really like when we have a basically full wipe because you, I'm sure, went all the way back to spawn. It would have been great for us to get in the forward hold, but like our heavy just got here. But you see, by us not getting in the forward hold, look how much ground we give to you guys. Like we could have had all this high ground instead. Yeah, and I also feel like there might. Actually, I don't even really want to say this, but <laughs> there might be some talk of like the way if this happens, like in, whenever you cap or are capping in those moments where you're just sitting on cap, there's nothing to do but spy check. I feel like that's like a very pivotal moment of like when teams can hold the point or not, because you can really talk in those like, you know, a few seconds, you know, maybe there are a few seconds that you cap the point, but like it is time to where you can, you know, communicate with how you want to hold it. And I feel like teams kind of rely on like, oh, you should just know. But like, if you communicate how you want to hold that, like, you could do a, you know a lot more with a lot less, at least for like the time being. You know, you can be like, hey, we are down three, so we should play the point, but we're not playing to like lose our lives, like something like that, where it's, you know, kind of in between between baiting and feeding, where you're kind of like baiting for your players to get alive, but you're you know feeding just so that they don't get you know times four on point. And that's that's where like a lot of teams I think struggle is they don't communicate those parts of the game, and maybe that's not like you know it is like the scout ringer as well as like comes into that fact because I know a lot of the times like when we used to play you guys, uh, uh, in season was it six Krusty Krab like you guys were very quick to just immediately be aggressive on forward holds and then you know a lot of your ubers would get extremely deep before you pop as well so that's something that's like very noticeably different here regardless of like the picks that were you know done before that's just something that i noticed yeah that, that's so well said because even think about this play like what did we do we call like the call was well first of all maybe it was that we just know quote unquote but if not then um the play was to wait for our spawns and like we waited this whole time for our heavy to get here so we could start our hold but by the time we took our heavy to walk all the way up to cliff, you guys got into point, basically it's full capped, and our heavy just got sniped instantly as soon as he got here, so like, that's something I try and go over a lot, even with the invite, um, well it's the most criminal in invite, now that I think about it, but the right plan is the right plan, okay? <laughs> but the other team doesn't want to let you do the right plan, so if you have the perfect call that will always work, the opponent like wants to do something to stop you from doing that, so... You guys are like, okay, if they're waiting for spawns, we take the space. So even if, you know, waiting for our spawns was a good move, you guys would do something to counter it. So 
uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be like the right call. It just has to be effective and fast compared yeah, to this it, where we just sat around, right? It's like the, it's the theory of like, if you have all, like, even if you have six goons alive, six gamers alive, like, if you all, you know, focus fire together, like, you're surprised, like, you'd be surprised at what you can get done sometimes. If we even fed, we were down, like, what, two people? Like, even if we went super deep on you and, like, spamming cliff, peeking our flank concrete, mm -hmm. me playing on your rock, like, we would have stalled you by another five seconds and a heavy could have come in without getting sniped. Yeah, so, maybe if you guys were, yeah, if, if you if you didn't back out behind point, like if your demon didn't back out behind point, he could have sticked up main or, you know, put stickies on porch or something like that or, you know, got some spam early on cliff or main to like kind of stall the push a little bit. That's kind of a big thing on cough that I notice is like sometimes you're at the mercy like on medic, like, okay, my I want to be forward. I know I want to be forward. Uh, now, I don't really talk, but I like to be just permanently holding W for the most part. If like I have numbers, and then as soon as I have, don't have numbers, I'll just like think, okay, well, what can we do to you know s slow their push? What is their sniper up? Is their demo up? Like something of those power classes that we can take. I'd like to be healing them or like try to get them out of the game. But like this here is like where you get like forced, or I wouldn't say like forced. It's more of like you're Ubering for the point. I like these are always like the struggle bus Ubers that I fear having. And they happen a lot. Like, <laughs> and they always frustrate me when they do. Like, I, I try not to get mad at it, but it's like when these happen, where you're like, okay, let's back out. Like, let's wait for our spawns, and then they make a play, and then you're forced to use your Uber, not like necessarily the way you want to entirely. It's very frustrating. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I'm completely convinced now. We're uh, for the folks back home. We're coming to you from just after the Lakeside match, which is week six, right? So we this is a you know just about two weeks after this match happened on product here, but I've now it's been proven enough times to me where I can't forget it now that the most cursed MCM call is we need to stop losing our medic so much because <laughs> any time that call comes in in a game, then we start playing me like you saw like I'm back in pocket just hiding and sitting around. We're playing me back in main where I'm just taking damage and then have to leave again anyway. Like, we have to go in. Our players want to take the space. They want to go fast. They can do the damage, and they can buy the time. Even if I go down every so often, it's better for me to go down while we're winning the round than for me to live forever while we lose the round. So, yeah. listen, and anyone who tells me that is about to get something in Mumble. Yeah, and then another thing is, like, the, the HPM factor is, like, a lot higher when you're fighting and, like, in, and you're, like, actually, you know, not in these, like, passive positions as medic where like you feel comfortable at least enough to be able to extend the beam length. Like you talked about like the flow chart where like you can have that beam length of like comfiness of like, okay, I'm not really in the range of if they take spam like, or they take a pipe, I'm not gonna take damage. And that's where you can see those like crazy logs of like 1500, 1600 HPM of just getting those crit heals and maintaining like fighting at all time. Yeah. I like this though, where your scout gets deep. It's just, yeah. The, I feel like the 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 call probably was that he was in pocket. I'm not too sure. I feel like the the only way you could have backed out sooner there is if you left your scout. But I feel like I would have done the same thing and stayed with my scout because you guys did end up killing me as well. So it was good on like killing you know, the enemy medic. So I mean, let's just. I put that down to a team thing because, like, they we, should have collapsed on them. Yeah. They yeah. If the sniper is the farthest team. forward person on the whole team, we messed up. Yeah. I feel like that Uber shouldn't have been. And maybe it was designed to try and kill me because I was close on having, but the. I think the goal could have been to just kill what you can and kind of trust our pick classes to kill the, the medic when they come back in or at least force the Uber out early and just trust that we can get the picks that we need, survive and play the point rather than kind of over committing to main for the enemy medic. But at the same time, it's like, okay, like you said earlier, it's like, okay, well, if we do that and they get Uber and then we're down like one or two players and we're, you know, it's like, oh, it's the, the best play always yeah. wins. Like, yeah, we're like right. we're about to lose the round either way. So like we at least may as well pick like the better of the two bad options kind of thing. Yeah.
Yeah, that is such a curse mm. mid. Our demo starts inside of our Pyro's model, so he can't get arrowed. Our heavy gets his full buff and then get full charge, gets full charge headshot. And then now I eat this pipe while we have soldier behind, so. Yeah, so. This is like, this looks like a coach's corner, like shot away image. Like, <laughs> how do I win? How do I win mids like this? I remember that. What was that? Was that to Soapy? Is like, how do I play this soldier? Like, how yeah, do I they're so this? good. They have like a Habib one too. He has one. I love, that's my favorite part of the coach's corner. Yeah, shout out to Coach Bugs. Shout out to Coach. Uh, yeah, this is cursed. Um, yeah, there's nothing like no matter how good you play this right now. Like, see, th this is where the moment is like, okay, as medic, do I just immediately say screw you guys and leave, or do I try to like hit some arrow on a player, or you know, do the best I can to heal what what I have little life left? You know, like. Is, what, what are you thinking there? Like, is it just, is it doomed? Or like, and you're like, okay, I need to leave? Or is it like, holy crap, maybe I can get some heals out? Yeah, I, uh, when I do a lot of demo reviews, I say to people where I'm like, okay, to me, this feels like it's about to go wrong, you know? Like, so you have mm -hmm. to do something now. But the problem in this situation is like, it was fine. Like it was, you know, maybe a tiny bit bad for a blue. And then in all of maybe, a third of a second two thirds of a second it was instantly completely lost in it. like i needed to have left eight seconds earlier with only a quarter of a second's notice so there was just no way i on this is like the worst answer which i like to never give but to answer your question of like do i just stay in hard commit or do i try and bail i just feel it out most of the time like if it's so bad i just go with my gut yeah i i get that i i i have an, an another t thing that it's just a you know um, because you're a fellow prisoner in medic jail. Um, do you ever have that time where like you're in and you know you can be in, but then your team's just like, we need our medic to leave, leave. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, why not? Like, why shouldn't I be in here? Like, have you ever had, like, I feel like that happens so often where like you see teams that are like blaming their medic for one thing or like dropping an Uber, but like, there's no, like, you know, there's no correlation between those moments that you are in that you shouldn't that you're trusting yourself to be in and you're making like you know great healing decisions there yeah i'll tell anyone who will listen that i am noticeably like significantly worse without marty as my pyro where i came up with him over the years like we came up like iron steel silver gold platinum together and um even now in platinum i've played a couple seasons together so we just know all through all these years you know messing around on land and everything we go so far back that we just kind of know like he knows i'm already in and i know that he's going to be with me so there's mm -hmm. really none of that consideration for me when i'm playing with marty so when i don't have him then i get into that situation all the time where i'm like hey i'm like we should all be here and i'm here and also i called for us to be here like why aren't we here and then yeah people say to come back but then i'm back and i'm like great guys we said we stopped losing our medic here i'm playing on like the back of our cliff or going back to spawn for the whole round and now we lost so what do we do so that's why to me marty is like such an incredible teammate to have because he just like knows i'm about to go in himself so that goes and does it too with me and, and i'm yeah. lucky for that yeah i had the the few games i got to play with marty uh, one of the one of the most entertaining pirates to play with i'd say He's so it's good, it's not not very many pyros can you just randomly like you know count on to just force their uber which actually hunter did force wall but that was just another thing but like you know force their uber easily white players and also be just you know one of the medic's best friend like it's all around all around great player marty yeah i hope everyone doesn't mind our tangents i mean this is a great review but i guess yeah, it's supposed to be like 40 minutes into four minutes or something i'll, I'll keep it rolling So I guess I leave this time. I, I mean, I actually think that the team made a mistake by not chimping for me because I, w I was a free kill, basically. True. Like, true. the mid was already won. You kind of just slid it away. That, that's what you guys get for not listening to Demento. Like, you guys, if you started listening to Demento, you'd be so much better. <laughs> Anyway, what do you think about this? So, I, okay, I, I, uh, yeah, to, new new topic, new topic. <laughs> okay, all the teams I've been playing with for the past probably year, like it, for okay, 
all the years before this one, so for like six years or something, teams would roll out on cliff. But this mm. year, everyone likes to, um, like for the past 12 months being a year, like to go out behind house when, you know, they don't have point and we're starting the recommit just because mm -hmm. teams play so forward. There's so much spam here on cliff. But for some reason, Exile insisted every single time, never, ever go main to house. Every single time, come to Cliff with me. Even if they have six people on it, I want us to go Cliff instead of main. So um, we're doing it, but what do you like to do? I personally will do whatever that like I can get in safely. So if there are snipers on rock, I particularly don't like to go main. I'm more than happy going Cliff and dropping down. But a lot of the times, like my team will make the call like, we just need to go house, we need to go main fast, or we need to go valley, and we'll just full commit, and I'll just, you know, try to do my best ODB shuffle impression. Oh, oh wait, I, sorry, I meant like the main spawn door, like to behind house, so like, I, I prefer- Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they love doing that. They love doing that way more than going cliff. I, I, I don't particularly like going cliff, because like you said, the spam is just so aggressive. I am okay with going cliff if my sniper wants to peek China, though. Like if we get a sniper pick or something, but when we're coming in, like our spy makes a nice play or something like that, or our soldier, and you know our sniper wants to peek an aggressive angle on China, I really like going cliff because you can you know heal everyone from cliff. Like it's really easy to be safe and kind of or like not really safe, but like kind of heal every player on your team that's needs to get healed before you push in. Typically, besides like your maybe your engineer that's playing on grass. Uh, so. I I mean, I think Cliff is fine if it's like a transition thing, like you said. Like, if we're getting a guy to China, that's the play, great. If we're drawing and we're dropping off uh, Cliff, that's great. If we're going for a sack and I'm about to leave, also great. But what's the play here? Like, I'm on 75. Is it play for me to sit here while all of us take spam and get no picks for the next, like, 10 seconds to build Uber while you're all, like, preparing for us and knowing where we're coming from? I don't I think, think so. I, I don't think this is the move at all. I think either playing main and pushing your sniper into an aggressive angle either getting them into pocket and kind of like hard scoping their demo or maybe having your sniper go cliff and kill the flank or maybe having your sniper go concrete and having your soldier play that like highlander house and kind of having that heels like laxed back in main like right below china or like japan and just kind of being able to heal your demo and like kind of working a sniper pick on their heavy or something like that like, because a lot of times teams just sit there heavy on cliff, and most of the time, like if you try to edge cap on the left side, you get spammed by the heavy. If you try to edge cap on the right, there's probably stickies right behind the point, so it doesn't really feel safe. So I think going main here and playing a pick with your sniper, trying to get anyone overextending, is probably the move rather than going cliff anytime in these dry like 75 80 scenarios because right now like you're not building optimally in this scenario right like and no one's taking damage really except if it's like oh shit everyone's getting piped right like in reality yeah, if someone takes damage then i take damage yeah yeah and and this is why i hate these moments like you you said it best is like this like transition is fine but if you get stuck up here you're not building as fast because people aren't really taking damage and if they do you're just taking a pipe straight to the face, which is not fun. <laughs> Agreed. And now I'm like healing a full buffed player. I have one guy with me. Yeah, and no one's with our sniper, so he gets chimped for. Oh, and I guess this was a sack play, but I'm, I now have Uber and spawn. I believe and it's not that critical of my team either. This was a tough match overall, but still. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course not. I have a lakeside log that I can be critical of your team of, though. <laughs> <laughs> yep, fair is fair. Keep, yep, now we're even. Okay, okay. I like this. I like this, but I... Yes. Yes, yes. Scout, get in. I think we could have, honestly, with how, like, with how, like, we're so quick to get into main there, it could have been, like, we wait to get more point pressure, but maybe the call was, like, evil was in a position to, like, go in. That's probably the only time I would like to Uber from way far back. Like if my spy is calling it like really early or my soldier's calling it or something. But typically like, I, I mean, do you feel like, com do you feel like product is one of those matches where like, if you get the Uber out early, you're just better off? No, uh, like a little bit. I mean, this to me like feels in terms of the body language anyway, that like normally I would like to milk, but first, 
or playing against Lenny, who could be on Cliff or anywhere else. So mm. I can't, like, I'm always risking it to milk. But then second, like, you know, in all of our scrims, it's like, someone went in but never said use. And then they're like, why didn't you use on me when I died instantly to some, like, a trap? And I'm like, I don't, mm. you, I, you know, give me a 3 two, one or something. We practiced it a million times. So, yeah. yeah, just to me reads like a body language thing. Like, in an ideal situation, I would like to milk. But this, uh, with this the way the scrims went and everything, we just felt like we had to use felt it. Felt rushed. Um, okay, got crit heals on him before the... <laughs> Unlucky he got stabbed. Yeah, so here you kind of like have lost like four players. So there's really nothing you can do other than back out. I like that you're just like really early extending your beam, not committing. Um, yeah. Unlucky that Jerry got stabbed there too. I really don't like this positioning though. Like that, <laughs> that scared me the entire way you were walking up. I feel like when you're walking up from base of cliff or going out of pocket, like you have to do something to get in, especially versus Lenny. Like that was a really nice bomb by Sophie. Um, do, do you but, think uh, the play was to go rock then or what? Uh, I, I, I think you should have just uh, full hugged the right wall or played scout speed. I think the, if our scout was there, the scout speed is kind of the most important thing. Cause like a lot of the times uh, you can stutter step the scout speed. So like if you latch onto your scout, it immediately gives you the bonus. And then if you latch back onto a class that's slower, it will take away the bonus. And so you can kind of like stutter step your movement through sight lines. I don't know if it helps that much. I still get sniped, but like, I just feel like a lot of the times when I do that, it helps a lot more when people are on a rock. Interesting. I mean, yeah, I've never tried that. I'll give it a shot if I remember. Also just latching to your scout and just full committing. Like yeah. that's also works too, because they don't expect you to do it. Now that I'm saying it, they do. <laughs> <laughs> This is fucking Assassin's Creed stats. That's like three Yeah, hours. that is the horror game right there. It's one of those times like normally I would probably have to leave, but we're also about to lose the round. Yeah, I also like, like owl spy checking. Spy checking. Yeah. Wait, I, I mean, I would like the animal, not the league. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The the turning around and like looking up and everything. I. I think we probably could have just committed fully. Maybe the sniper was called on rock and then we were going to aggress him or he was on China and we just didn't want to commit there. That's probably what it was. I doubt that it was like... Yeah, this is... I, I feel like I would go main here just because like there's really nothing I can do in pocket right now. Like I would just feel so... Like I know you're close to having, but like I feel like it's, it's worth it to get that uber quicker because of how much time's left on the game. You mean you would speed boost across, or you would run all the way around? I would, yeah, I would get scout speed to cross right here, like on the left, like where your, like where your health is on your HUD. Like I would yeah. try to cross from there because that's like the lowest dip on like the the slope here, and I could crouch through there, and it kind of gives like the least amount of my head hit box to their sniper if he's sitting pocket. Gotcha. This one was like an obligatory scouts. use right away type of there. Latching on scout and post tubers is great because you get the speed boost and they're gonna clean up the damage that already came in, I think. You guys got a lot of picks here too. I like this. Oh. <laughs> Probably could have been a little slower to come in to make sure our like crosshair is watching. Yeah. I do think, like, aggressing, like, giving our sniper more room rather than playing this passive is, like, the complete wrong, like, play, like, thought process, you know what I mean? Like, when people say play with your sniper, it's more like play with your sniper by opening space rather than, like, playing passively. And I feel like you agree with me in the sense of, like, I'd rather be healing up front than, 
like necessarily playing extremely passive in these scenarios, especially that like, yeah, there's a zero seconds on the clock. Like we need to stuff them somehow. Right. Yeah. Th these are the plays that drive me crazy when we're like, okay, we did, we like fought really hard to get some ground. Now let's walk backwards. Like, <laughs> I don't think you could ever convince me that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I'd rather die inside their spawn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you see here, like they were even down a demo. Like we had so much time and space to take. Yeah, but and then we're just now we're getting sitting on the low ground. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you're building really well there too. Hey, uh, sorry about that. We're back after a quick splice where I crashed a little bit, but um. Also, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Evil's arm here, if you can see it. But anyway, talking about what we learned from the last demo. I definitely uh, want to employ more of the scout speed boost going from pocket to rock, especially like, um, hey, well, why not start off this place on another tangent? The way that I like to play medic, uh, uh, especially because I come from a main calling background and on MC I'm the secondary caller, where I try and identify situations where I can turn the tide of a fight. Like if I can turn mm. a fight from losing into winning by doing something, then I want to do it basically every time. So mm -hmm. that's a really good tool for me in particular because in times that I want to get in and go aggressive and like, I know this person can win the fight if they just get the beam. Like you kind of said in pocket, like I'm just kind of sitting there waiting for everyone else to win the fight without me or lose the fight without me. But if I go across the pocket, then I can like really take the fight in with people. Like maybe I take the same damage as them and die, but it's better to at least try and win the round, you know? I... I don't like to do that all the time because I'm not really a main caller. Like, I don't speak typically at all. Uh, and if I do speak, you know, something's probably going very wrong. <laughs> like, I'm, but uh, yeah, the, I, I'm basically the exact opposite. Like, I will, I play medic very uh, defensive. So uh, I would say, like, sort of like, sort of aggressive in the times I need to be aggressive, but, and then in like, you know, in the most optimal way of being able to run away at any time. Like, uh, I, I pride myself on being very difficult to cheese out of like free deaths, which is like, I, I do die a lot in like so stupid situations, but like, I feel like everyone does that. Like I try to be very, uh, very defensive at all times and more or less like you know how you're like okay i'm gonna try to heal this player to make sure that they win i'm more of like uh let's maintain heals on everyone as possible and then maintain like you know a defensive position so i can heal my flank if they need to heal a flank like making sure people can at least come back into the fight like i pride myself on product a lot is hitting those pack arrows on either side so any player that's like running to you know the health pack on cliff or the health pack on grass, uh, okay. since I play so passive a lot of the times, I'm able to crossbow them quite quite easily. Yeah, very nice. Sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah, I like that there's different brands, you know, like especially. Um, oh, I guess there's a rollout anyway, but yeah, I mean, maybe if some. Uh, fans of mine going back over these months will know on my on k &D where I got cut from the team that's kind of why it didn't work out where like they picked I'm like hey I want to join the team they said great you're in and I'm like yeah here's my resume I'm a proactive player like I want to set things up so that they'll work out in advance rather than respond rather than a reactive player maybe like more someone like you or like depending on how it goes you can find the right solution I can't do that I have to tell everyone and myself the right solution before it comes I'm very vocal and I'm very aggressive. So those are the three strengths that I bring to the table. And they're like, okay, your role is passive, silent, jail. And uh, yeah, then it, it, they didn't like the way I played and I didn't like playing the way I played either. So it was just not meant to be, but yeah, there's a I lot agree. of different options. It is, and, and on the same turn, it's like, if like people are just looking at it just purely on a play style, like your play style adapts to a lot more teams. Like, I feel like I would have a lot of trouble playing on any team that relies on a medic to call or at least give them information of some sport. Uh, even uh, not that I can't do it, it's just 
it's not natural at all, you know? Yeah, I, I remember having that, like, explanation when it was season five. Yes, yeah, season five uh, RGL Highlander, and Zukima was awarded the medic of the season for playing on KND, right? But if you put Zukima on KND, he is by far the best medic in the league. E- even if you put me on KND in his place, he would be better than me. But if you put either of us on literally any other team in all of RGL, I think I would be the better medic. So th- there's like and a I lot, of, a lot to say with the team. Oh, thank you. But there's a lot to say with like the team style and like the the thing that your team needs, especially because I have RJ who talks very little, Triple who talks very little, Chinatown also does not talk that much. I mean, he contributes, but I mean, it, it, it's Marty a very, doesn't very talk. Team type of team where a medic calling is can be very useful, but it's also it's a lot of like stress on you too, because like you don't have the same information all the time as everybody else. I I don't know why this is, but to me it's way less stressful getting to talk and make these calls because like you feel it's like, like it's more of your control then. Yeah, or like in these examples, like we saw, yeah, like the, the, uh, let's go back to saying we need to keep our medic alive is the worst fucking call my team can make because I'm like, wait, so I just sit here like behind our house and wait to die while we're not fighting anything. Like that sucks. We need to go in and do something and try and win the round. So that's like, if I'm going in, I know what to do to try and win the round. But if I'm just staying out, I'm not winning the round and I'm just waiting for something to come. Cause the soldier is gonna jump. The spy is gonna decloak, you know, the going to use Uber and with the scout and demo jumping anyway. So what am I waiting to die? I may as well do something before I die. Yeah, see that that's where we are polar opposites. <laughs> <laughs> I love I will sit I, I used to like say that like I will drop every Uber. <laughs> I will hold this forever. <laughs> All right. <I> was, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I was just asking to say Draffy see <laughs> Draffy used to laugh so hard. I don't know if he was just get really mad or whatever, but yeah. Just just yeah, very, very polar opposite there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like. I'm very proud of my style, but it's very different. Hey, uh, there we go. Hey, sorry. After another splice, we're back at it. Uh, here's the mid. Oh, I can't say I haven't made that mistake as well, but. You which know, which right. mistake in particular? The uh, the healing of the spy. Uh, oh yeah, I had that in my match as well on League side, so that I can't can't fault you for that. Even though your soldier is dead, like that happens to me too. Like that's just just comes with the game and wanting to heal everyone as much as possible. Th- this was actually my favorite part of the entire match, because in halftime. Oh, sorry. Listen, we're uneven again. I'm going back in. Get ready. At halftime, we pulled up the logs and realized that Blake had two... D- you remember we were t- me and Blake just went to this whole rant saying, I'm the aggressive guy, I want to go in, I want to take these fights, I want to risk my life for the round. Yes, and, and then, I'm very passive. Yep, and Blake had two deaths to my one after that horribly losing half of my team. So I said, this cannot be. So I was taunting Demento in the chat like, man, you got to fucking play better, Demento. You're really starting to, you know, in your old age, you've really mellowed out here in TF2. You're not really so much a threat it, 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 on the server like you used to be. And then instantly he just WM1s me. And uh, that, that was my favorite part of this whole game. Yeah, I, I will <laughs> give away one trade secret of Hood Naruto. It, we do not typically focus the enemy medic unless we're on, like, one of those games where, like, I'm just perpetually dying to like very like, you know, if I'm dying to your Uber or if I'm dying to like very o- obvious stuff that I shouldn't be dying to and we're on like perpetual this ad, then we're going for the medic. But this game, since a lot of the times like your team was dying, the call was to, you know, back out, do not chase, do not feed for rogue, like don't feed. And that was like the call to all the game and i think jacob like like you said when he saw that that you said oh you had less deaths jacob was like super pissed <laughs> and he's yep. like i'm going for him that's exactly what i wanted it was so good <laughs> it was so good it like couldn't have been more perfect because we had, like lost the mid so horribly and i'm like wow we lost this just already and then dementos here like no 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 i'm not done with you yet <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah I, I like that a lot it is a cursed log though 
I so like this is fine now. Like we went for the sack. Uh, I kind of overstayed a little bit. I thought for some reason it looked like Animus was walking forwards onto Cliff again, but like that time playing Cliff is fine. Like we got a, we knew it was yeah. clear. We got our guys in for a buff. Got me right out. So that I like. I think there you didn't necessarily need to back all the way out to spawn. I think you could have gone to like the base of Cliff, like right at the exit of the door with your scout. But like since you did get hit with the ball or like the cleaver, you were like 60 health, so it was probably better to just go back to spawn. I might be uh, yeah, but talking myself out of it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've had after like that kind of a sack that like my team will go, will lose five players. And then suddenly your team will just send like demo soldier over this thing or like scout a walk on cliff with heavy and like I just die. So I'm like, what's what am I realistically doing here with my scout that I'm not doing in spawn? True. true. Or the other way around, rather. True. You can even see here I'm like trying to walk in front of exile on demo a little bit just because I'm like, we need to go now. Like this is a dry, or maybe we didn't get the medic. I don't know, but at least sack or something. But we're just kind of standing around. Oh no! Oh thank God. I believe my only death this round is to a drop. Nice. Yes. Not nice. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There, there it is. Yeah, there it is. This time we needed to force, you saw like these guys took so much damage and it is a quote unquote free uber. But if anyone oh. knows my claim to fame with Mr. Slim, that uh, free ubers are never free. Yeah. What do you, I feel like we're going to go on another tangent again, but what are your thoughts on like like when the medic drops in the other team and you have uber like what do you like not on payload on cough like, that's like where i feel like there's there's multiple ways to take it and i feel like i love to just hold on to it or like just use it to use it and like save anyone that you can yeah it's basically always better to hold it but in this situation i'm looking at my team like with how tough of a time we've had so far, I don't really trust us to not even to say that that's, my team is bad or it's their fault or anything, but like, I don't feel good about us winning this fight without me getting forced when I don't want to use or mm -hmm. dropping like demo first and then our heavy gets sniped. And then it's like me and our pyro now with Uber, like what the hell are we going to do? So in this yeah. time, I'm like, we must use pretty much if we're, uh, we, if we use right now, we're going to get the point for sure and have all our players alive. So in this situation, it was good, but in another so like way, I would say no. So like if it's the point, if it's like 100% guaranteed, like no sniper, no spy, like no soldier, you're like, okay, we don't need to use. But if they're up and there's like that, that pick class, like, you know, TF2 flavor RNG, which isn't really RNG, I guess, because, you know, they do make good plays, even though all their classes are, you know, very oppressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly, like, even if it's, like, 40% guaranteed, I feel like it's still worth the risk, but just the way this match is going, I'm like, all of our fights begin at, like, 20% guaranteed and only get worse, so. Mm -hmm. Especially keeping the heals up here, like, you're keeping, like, you, I like that you're buffing your scout just to go back to the gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, th this is nice, at least from the team, that uh, if we're all sitting in the middle of nowhere, not fighting point, at least we're healthy. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can see, like, our demo just got shoved completely out of main. Our scouts who do, who's doing some damage is, you know... Oh, I thought I arrowed the wrong person. Mm. And now this is a good fight. Oh, I absolutely should have crossed to our demo because Sniper was yeah. dead. Especially if our Sniper is watching that, like a hawk. I feel like... Eh. Dude, it feels like so many times, like, you're, you're, you're still building really well when you're in the pocket there. Like, it doesn't feel like you're getting in these situations where, like, we're aggressing you and you're at 96, 97. Like, it doesn't feel like that at all. And at least in these mids, or, like, these, like, dry fights slash, like, you're holding the point. It, it In that scenario right there, like, I feel like a lot of medics, lower-level medics that aren't as, like, aware of what's going on will get in, like, those 95, 96% uber situations, whereas you just get 100% there. Yeah, but, I, I, like, even if I died, honestly, but we kept Exile alive, I think I'd single-handedly lost us that fight by not committing to Exile. Because if I had been able to keep him alive, like, we would have dropped three less players, and the cap time wouldn't have really come in. I, I think I just... Because Lenny was dead, so, like, I had to free cross mm -hmm. the rock. So mm -hmm. I actually think I just straight-up lost us that fight by myself. Okay. I, I would say that crossing into there would also mean, like, where's my scout, you know? Like... That, the, that comes to also, like, you know, not back to Animus, no offense. Like, it's just, I feel like way more comfortable there with scout speed than anything. 
and I don't blame you for ha- like staying in pocket with no scout speed. Yeah. Like for me personally, like scout speed is just if I don't have it, I'm I'm kind of frustrated. <laughs> I also feel like with the demos, it's like, it's way easier for you to come to me than for me to come to you. But yes. In the moment, yes. you know. What they they get tunnel vision. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I would be playing Cliff here. Was this just because Exile wants to come Cliff every time? Um, no, well, you saw, like, our team pretty much had died, but, like, the sniper was still dead, and we had Uber, like, I was by myself, and, like, we can be pushing now. Probably I should have backed out to spawn, but this is definitely like a rogue play where I'm like, I want to go in right away, now, mm-hmm. like with this Uber we're going to use. So I was just waiting for people to get to me. Okay. Even now, like go with you know the two weeks we play with RJ instead of Exile, for example, I would like as soon as I put my beam on him, I would say, "Okay, we're using Uber in three, two, one, use," and like flash our demo to jump and get like say jump now and and uh, get our demo scouting right away. You see here with the contrast, we like came up here and then we backed up and then like we got some more spawns and then we went back in, but then we got more spawns, so we're backing up again and then like why haven't we used this whole time? Yeah, and I can see the like antsiness where like you're AD and you're like, okay, let's go, let's go, and it's kind of like not being reciprocated. Yeah. yeah. And you can even see like we told our scout to take the second half of the Ubers, but then he was saying that I was dropping him before the Ubers. So like, how could I drop you before if I don't touch you until it's halfway through? And, like he we started that on four- the entire time. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, that was our scrim problem, I guess then. But even now he like started the super on forty. But I, I guess it's not his fault. Like we said, we're all just sitting on cliff together. So what else are you guys gonna do realistically other than spam us? Mm-hmm. What do you think about this back out? Uh, I think it's it's. Uh, I would not go cliff there in particular. But it is okay because I would assume the sniper was, yeah, the sniper's dead. But I just typically don't like to back out cliff because that's where a lot of spies like to hang out. And even though like them dropping into me and when I go back into main or into valley, like is like you know kind of like what they like to do. I feel like I'm more confident in my team to come back to me in main rather than for them to shoot cliff in particular because like you're kind of like isolating yourself. Because if their spy, like if our spy was sitting on cliff there, right, and he has his revolver out, like like Def Joe, you know, smart player, he's just gonna revolver you, and the time it takes your team to get to you on cliff, then the time it takes them to get to you in pocket, is you know a lot longer. Even though you know you did end the Uber at like on the rock there, I feel like just bouncing down the cliff and going valley is probably the better play because you're not isolating yourself to the spy. Just in case. What, what it feels like watching this back is like I had, um, like I was calculating at the time, this is a winning post Uber and I want to stay in the fight, but I don't have enough time to run all the way downhill with the Uber that's left. So mm-hmm. if I get on the cliff, I'm like, close enough to be healing and recommit right away, but I'm also not just in a sight line or on a terrible spam low ground. So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I guess that was the idea, but then you saw we just like took so much damage that everyone backed up with me. So that yeah. went from already being like, Questionable to them, pretty bad, I think. Yeah, and and with you being on cliff, like you're you're playing perfectly for like the escape. Like if you're already like decommitting, but you're also like that little bit too far away. If anyone was on the left side of the point yeah. or like behind the rock, is like you're kind of like you're forcing yourself to either hit clutch arrows or just leave them to die. Which I wish, you know, arrows had a bigger hitbox. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> but only on the players I want to shoot at. I feel like buffing our engineer there was probably the play. We got stabbed, but I feel like getting crit heals on our egg just for like fodder. Like, I feel like that's yep. super important. <laughs> yeah, he's, no a, he's another scout with player. more health. Yeah. No offense, engineer players, but you are fodder. <laughs> Yeah, for real, he does basically scout damage and has more health, so it's always a good buff on product. Ooh, I like this positioning a lot. 
Yeah, that, that was very back cool. in Valley here, you came through main, didn't take any spam, went all the way to Valley. It's just unlucky that your sniper's not taking aggressive angle with you. Like, that's another thing that is very important on product, is if your medic is going to be playing in any position that makes them vulnerable, or somewhat like healing players on a point, your sniper needs to make sure that they're peaking that as well, and having the confidence that, hey, my medic's peaking, why not me? You know? Like, <laughs> The jail class is peaking. Why not the best class in the game? <laughs> Alright, that's... I, I would say that that's not your fault necessarily. Because it's like, on the mid, there should be... Like, there should be no reason for our power to look forward other than the spy in that scenario. And I feel like that's the spy timing. But it was also like a fast mid where like, your players are slower behind, behind house. And you're looking at them, so it's like... Okay, let me get into pocket here. Oh, and my players are still in house. The soldier's back there, so I want to help heal the players to fight the soldier. Like, I see where your mindset was, you know? Like, I want to heal them so they don't, like, you know, so they can kill him. I, well, then... I think it I think it wasn't that, but more like, yeah, I'm a big believer in, like, okay, if my power is watching for bombs, I watch for spy. If they're watching spy, I watch for bomb. But mm -hmm. in this situation with the house issue, we had, I think, two or three players watching the bottom of house, but no one watching the top of house where the soldier would actually come at me from. So I'm like, he could still get on me. I have three players oh, fighting yeah. the soldier, but he can still come, so I can't really look away, but I, I think that's still my fault that, you know, I could, like, just quickly flick back and forth to the spy while watching that angle anyway. We have lost the control point. Yeah, like this feels a little better to me because I can feed us. I bring to these angles. We're not taking spam like we are on Cliff. I, I just like this way more than Cliff. And you, you feel way more like you can buff the flank. You can get out through main. It's it's just a little, sometimes sketchy to get out through here if their soldier gets like really deep. But like I feel like I'm you know most of the time pretty confident in my pyro to be able to at least give me some time or myself to give myself some time. You know. Yeah. And that was a sack wave again, right? Of course, for the record, I, I did make a bunch of comments about Marty, but I do like playing with BM a lot. I mean, this is basically our first week, but he's a, he's a very good teammate. Oh yeah, we had him for one, one like, ringing scrim. He did well. He was fun. And Jacob and him were kind of, or no, Bull and him were kind of, you know, shit-talking each other. I feel like this is where the cliff is just getting exposed. Yep, yep. Like, that was so close to living, too. Like, I don't know if you saw my strafing, but JJ hit this, like, upwards, backwards rocket while being shot at by four people. Yeah, no, that was good on JJ. I watched I watched his POV. It was, Lenny was dead and watching him, and he actually hit really nice rockets there. Yeah. It's unfortunate he didn't do that on Lakeside. Why? What did he do on Lakeside? Oh, I don't know. I think Biffle, <laughs> I think Biffle has something to say. About I, I know what happened. I was, I was messing around. <laughs> this, is, this is like... Fine. Oh heck yeah! Look at that crosshair place. That was perfect. Looking up, cause you're like, okay, the soldier could come. I want to be looking at my soldier's health. You're trying to get vision of that. This is nice here. It's just a shame. Where's our demo? Like he died. He sacked in. So like he. And, you know, we need him to be this pressure. I, I really feel like even if we like 15 seconds ago just fed our heavy across the point, someone would get something out of it. Mm -hmm. like at least we'd be making some kind of progress, but now like, all right, sitting. we sat here, we got Uber for the for two lives and half our players' health. Yeah, and a lot of time on the clock. Yeah, great, now we're ready to start pushing, but also our spies were out of position. Our heavies not ready. Yeah, our heavies hurt. I was like a little bit of a congested Uber. It was like, I couldn't tell who wanted to go in or out. I mean, we were on top of each other, but yeah, that's always the worst one. This guy's like, don't drop me, but I'm like looking backwards, forwards, upwards, sidewards. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. And and it's also harder because, you know, the early Ubers were all scout Ubers, and then now we're shifting to, okay, now our demo and our scout are both taking the entire Uber. So it's such a big change, especially for like, like the... I don't know, like where you said, like the sixes mentality, where it's like I'd rather give my scout the Uber because they can, you know, 
yeah, I want to give my demo some of the Uber so they can get like a really nice sticky or really nice pipe to make them flash. But after that, they should get out, right? Yeah. Even if you don't want to drop your scout here. I like this. You came back to your snow creep. Yeah, this is a tough fight, but I'm just going to grab exile and not let go. I let go. Oh no, I let go. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, like yeah, I, th yeah, the hills I, on the heavy were kind of good, but it was too much, definitely. Yeah, I, I think that right there is one of those you just tank exile till you die. <laughs> but then again, it's like, yeah, okay, you could make that call, and then it's, okay, well, what if it was right when it's wrong? So I hate it when he does that. Why is he disguised? Uh, this yeah, is a cluster. Talking this about yeah, you guys are going nuclear. But talking about play styles, you know, comparing our old MCM heavies. First, Rue, where he's like, I am playing nowhere near the beam. I'm never going to get a buff or a bow. I'm going in or I'm respawning. Mm -hmm. So that's one play style, but it helped us a lot because we're just so fast to so, like, keep trying stuff. You know, like I said on Cliff here, I'm like, if we just fed our heavy in, we'd be able to go. Sorry, I'm recording. Mm -hmm. I think if you fed your heavy in and then as well as when we're playing on this left side of the point, the... Um, I feel like if our engineer went to the other side of our demo, that probably would have helped more rather than being like taking the same spam and creating like a double hitbox in one like tight little area. I feel like people don't like underestimate like their positioning like relationship to like their teammates, especially like when you're a class that like, you know, like pyro, engineer, you know, heavy. The heavies always pay attention to it, but like it's more of just like engineers and pyros and generals like if you take the same spam as your demo you're really screwing your medic over yeah 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 sorry i, I had a little bit of an interruption i apologize but my uh the like the, the way the rest of that analogy was supposed to go anyway is like rue would not take the heals but would make space but then zuki in season six would um you know like if i gave him the heals and he's going to do something with it like right away but you can see here this is the second style uh, a third style now is with Chinatown or Kalo like we have here, where he's like, he's just playing right here to support Exile. Like, if anyone mm -hmm. comes at Exile, then Kalo's gonna knock him back off. So Exile's like the focal point here. So, all I needed to do was also support Exile we win. But then I, I supported the supporter. Like, I, I was yep. healing the guy who wasn't taking the damage. Uh, and then, you know, our main guy that we're actually trying to support Exile went down because I took the beam off him. So, the, like... Yeah, first we see like how the playstyle fits into the team like we've been discussing, and then second, that's just straight up my fault for taking the beam off him, and now we're losing this fight completely because of it. Yeah, and now you're making the smart oh. decision just hold W and send it around, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Well, Blake, this has been a, a wonderful review. Do you have any closing thoughts? Um, I have 100% loss rate to MCM in playoffs. Um... That's and the win rate during the regular season, probably. Uh, I don't think I have 100% win rate. I don't think I've played you guys in the regular season besides this season. So So that's 100%. So, I, yeah, I guess it is 100%. Yeah, but 100% <laughs> loss rate in playoffs. That's, that's all I'd like to say is my closing thoughts. There you go. All right. Thank you so much, Blake. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, pleasure.